All right, everybody. Thanks so much for stopping by another live episode of Real Estate Titans sponsored by Lion Bolt Media. I'm your host, Greg Fowler, traveling throughout the marketplace, interviewing the top real estate professionals in our field, essentially gathering insight, inspiration, really drives and motivates these top producers above and beyond everybody else in what I'd like to consider a real estate titan. Now, our very special guest in Future Titan for today, I'm so excited, absolutely thrilled and honored, Jan Copeland. Jan, thank you so much for taking the time. It's an honor to have you. Thank you, Greg. I'm excited to be with you. Oh, this is great. And all the way from beautiful Virginia. So I'm really, really excited about this one. You know, it's, this technology is bringing people together. Sometimes yeah. there's hiccups when it's live, but, you know, <laughs> we move forward, we march forward. So, but uh, Jan, if you're ready to rock and roll, let's just dive into the series of questions. Really, everybody out there to get to know you as, as a professional, as a person, and really just go, go in there. Let's do it. Awesome. So the first question ends up being telling everybody just a little bit about yourself. Okay. Well, um, I have been uh, a real estate coach for the last three and a half years. And prior to that, I was a top agent with a top team um, in, in my former market for 11 years. Wow. And um, what happened was on my 50th birthday, my daughter gave me a grant, you know, gave me news that she was going to have a baby. Oh. And she lived here in Richmond and I lived in Winchester, Virginia, which is about three hours. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I never had grandparents. Hmm. So I said to my husband that night, well, the next morning, I said, honey, you know, we're moving to Richmond. He's like, I know. <laughs> and so um, I immediately got a plan together to, you know, quietly let people know that I was selling my team. Okay. And so I had interviews with four or five, I guess, four people. Okay. And then I sold it and um, have not looked back. Wow, so that's man. kind of, and before that, I was in corporate America um, in the telecom industry for 12 years. And okay. so I left that to um, kind of be an entrepreneur and, and, and seek my way out that way. Okay. And that's laying the foundation for the conversation. I love this part. So when we're talking about the, the process of corporate America, from real estate and then to that next part, which is coaching. So can you walk everybody through what was it like leaving corporate and why real estate? Why, why real okay. estate in the first place? What, what was your thought process? Awesome. Well, let me share with you that it wasn't um, from corporate to real estate. Okay. Um, basically, I was in um, the Philadelphia market. I was a senior director of sales and marketing for AT and T's Northeast region. Wow. Five hundred people. It was we were we were top region, and I met my husband online on a Christian okay. dating site. Wow. Cool. And so I I was like all excited to be a stay at home mom. Well, we moved to Northern Virginia near DC and the prices of homes were like, oh my gosh. So, um, so I actually got my um, coaching certification through the International Coach Federation to be a business coach for women. Wow. Okay. I wasn't about real estate, but it was as I was a business coach for women that I started getting a lot of, a lot of real estate clients that were real estate agents. And I'm like, hmm, I might want to do this. Hmm. Well, my husband's job took us out to Winchester, which is, which is like an hour and a half from DC. It was kind of like r rural. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, oh yeah, I, I can do real estate here. So, so the transition from corporate to an entrepreneur was, was as a coach, business coach. Wow. And, then, and then I tried my hand at real estate and I was, um, you know, in that area, they called me a blow in because I have a Philly accent. Maybe it's not <laughs> so strong now. But they say Fav and and they they're Southern sure. and um, and I wasn't really welcome. But in spite of that and knowing no one, mm -hmm. um, I I you know was sincere and I really cared and so I um I loved every second of it. And the reason I went wow. into real estate was because of that experience with coaching real estate agents and the fact that I am a um, junkie on um, everything decor, home decor. So I'm like wow. I always see inside people's houses and see how they decorate. Sure. Sure. And I, but I love that because it goes through the process of where you were going through and what inspired you and continue to go through. So with the coaching, so coaching, then real estate, but you've always been in coaching in some form or fashion with that. So the past three years, very specifically, mm -hmm. what's that evolution look like for you and, and uh, kind of the clientele that you serve and, and those yeah. sorts of things, kind of the background okay. there. So one thing that I, um, you know, that I kind of am out there with is that my mother was extremely depressed my entire life. 
and she passed away a couple of years ago. Oh, and, um, and so I always felt like she wasn't quite living. She was existing. Hmm. And so the reason that I turned to, to coaching when I left corporate America was because I want women. And I still, this is like in my heart. Mm-hmm. I want women to not only understand their value, but embrace it and internalize it, like breathe it in. Mm-hmm. Because so many women, for whatever reason, they they question, oh, I'm not good enough. You know, she's prettier than me. She's taller. She's skinnier. Like just whatever. Mm-hmm. Sure. She's smarter. And so, um, so my heart in coaching is to make sure that women know that um, they're valuable. Mm-hmm. You know, even if they don't do anything, like every and I really everybody's valuable. So that's right. kind of. I don't know if I answered your question, but that's like where my heart is. Yeah, no, and, and that did that because I, I really wanted everybody to get a perspective onto that, and and really the people that you serve, and and the audience in here, realtors, lenders, builders, developers, residential or commercial. But you know, that we shout out to all of our women who are watching or listening because there's a <laughs> lot out there, and and I know that this is going to resonate so deeply, you know, with everybody who's going to be tuning in or tuning in right now, live or after the fact. So. Uh, Jan, what was it like through the process of, you know, obviously where you're at now and, the, and what you're doing and making waves in the industry, you know, that you serve as far as real estate, what's your why? I mean, what really drives and motivates you to do what you do to the level you do it at? What, mm-hmm. what, what makes you, you know, really spark? Well, I'm going to say there's two. Love and it. the first one is um, very specifically that I, I like get jazzed when I see, when I meet a woman at a certain place in her career, in her personal life. And then, you know, as I coach her and I see her taking on her own, like, like she's coming into her own and she's really like, not only doing well in business, she's enjoying her personal life more. She really knows, like you're asking me why she knows why she's doing it. Yeah. And she knows that there's no excuses. Responsibility is a good thing. And, you know, so the whole nine yards, the other why is because um, my husband and I are in our mid fifties and we are on the countdown to retiring. So, I mean, I'm just going to be honest, I'm working because it's something I love Mm -hmm. and I'm passionate about it. I know that I give the value to my clients and my husband and I are both divorced. And so we got a little behind in our retirement. And so, you know, so a why so that we can retire Hmm. um, so that I can enjoy all my grandkids. I I love that because again, at the very beginning, you were talking about moving to be closer to family and there's nothing more important than family. You're, You're talking about, you know, getting closer to retirement so that you can really focus on obviously the most important segment, which is our families. Yeah. Uh, so I love that why and that driver on top of it. And, and yes, we have to provide and that's important too, but it's showing your passion. And what you stated earlier is obviously about the people that you work with, the women that you see throughout their lives and travel through. I think that's fantastic. And really setting them up for greatness above and beyond and really just kind of guiding them through. So could you talk a little bit about that, Jan, it's give everybody a little taste of uh, you know, your coaching program and, and yeah. if anybody's interested, how they get a hold of you that way. I, I would love to provide that to the audience. Okay. So my whole thing is that, as I told you, I went to a town where I was obviously not from there. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, and rather than try to fit in, I, and I'm 5'11", so I'm tall. Um, I just started networking and being who I was. So what's foundational in my coaching is that you need to be who you are. Stop looking left, stop looking right. Just because if you follow what George does to be successful, you might not, that might not work for you. And same with Susie. Uh So I really help them kind of dive into what they love for me. As I shared with you, it was home decor. So I was was tight with all the home home designers and decorators. Hmm. We used to have an annual, um, symposium in my area. Wow. And so, um, you know, like I have clients who, who, um, who, when I met with them, they love gardening, for example. Hmm. And she said, I don't go to my gardening club because I feel like I need to be working. I'm like, wait, what? And so she went to the gardening club clockwork consistently. She hmm. got $2 million listings sold. You know, she got the listings, she wow. sold them. She would have never done that. And I, I guess I gave ladies permission to really take a step back and see what you like and then create your business around that and be really individual. Be, wow. and that's how you stand out. I think that's beautiful, Jan. When you're talking about that, everybody who's watching or listening really needs to take a look at their life and their careers and, and, and what it is surrounded uh, around and then really look at that and how can you take it somewhere else. But 
you know, being happy and passionate and, and kind of figuring that out. It's not easy for everybody. I mean, as you know, yeah. so to have somebody guide them through that process is to me is priceless. And, yeah. and again, having that accountability partner to really go through and, and, and manage and some of the best and brightest minds that have been on this series, they all believe in, you know, bringing on coaches, uh, mentors, having those that surrounding nature to really have a different perspective on your life and your business that you might not see. We, right. we all have tunnel vision in a certain way and we need somebody to kind of open the blinders and, mm -hmm. and shed some light. And so I think that that's huge, the fact that you do that. And again, this is going to resonate very, very big with the audience. What's the best way, if anybody's watching or listening, to kind of get a hold of you as far as the coaching platform and really sure. just learn a little bit more that way? Okay, so to learn about me, my website is Coach Jan Copeland and it's... um. You, we all have the spelling. It's C-O-P-E-L-A-N-D, coachjancopeland.com. Or if they want to jump on a discovery call with me, they can just go to chatwithjan.com, chatwithjan.com. And, oh, and then right. they can get on my schedule. Okay. And I will have those links in the comments down below, as always for everybody. So you can really get a hold of Jan and, and learn if you're interested to kind of go deeper that way. So Jan, I do want to sh uh, shift gears. And this is actually one of the crowd pleaser questions through the series because they want to learn from the Titans. They want to understand how they've grown and scaled their business or perspective that you could give. So if you could look back at your career thus far mm -hmm. and pick or choose one or two things that you added to your business that took it from one level to the next, yeah. what does that look like for you? Okay. So um, when I was an agent, I... Um, when I, there were two things. Okay. When I, um, I initially was a, like one of the first Zillow agents back in, I think it was 06, 07. Like wow. I was, one of the first, everybody thought I was crazy and Smart. I didn't care. I was like, I'll just do it. Right. Yep. Um, and when I, interestingly enough, when I sold my team, um, she inherited over a hundred reviews and just a beautiful, well, you know, beautiful Zillow profile, which I wow. wish I wouldn't have sold. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> um, so, so that was a good business for me through Zillow. But yeah. when I shared with you and I, I got the idea of getting with home designers, interior designers and, and decor, you know, like antique dealers and all that. Sure. And when I started to network person to person, face to face in real life. Hmm. My business took off exponentially. Wow. One of the things that I launched was a, um, it's now called Women of Winchester. It's okay. a women's networking group every, every um, month. Um, back then it was called Sterling Women of Winchester. Well, I was at the podium with 50 to 100 ladies every month. And, and that was huge for my business. So, so, that, yeah. so I guess my point in that is, mm -hmm. even if ladies or men are out there doing Zillow, it, you know, if you take that chance and risk you know, risk being, you know, rejected and just, just get out there and person to person network as soon as you're able to, now that we're taping this during the pandemic, mm -hmm. um, it's going to make a big difference. And the second thing was that in so, in so doing and opening myself up to the one-on-one, -on -one, like in person, um, I should have, you know, um, I should have grew my team bigger sooner because oh. I had, a team. and so I, I, I don't live my life in regrets, but I'm like, dang, if I would have brought on more agents, it would have been like just even better. So, wow. But, but Jan, that's, a, that's a huge perspective from somebody who's walked the talk, right. Who, who's been there, done that, bought the t-shirt, as they say. And yeah. I think that when you look at that, you have it kind of a, a beautiful marriage of it being hand in hand with digital and physical. And, and I, I think that when top producers understand that, yeah, this is a people business and the fundamentals are getting in front, shaking hands, meeting people, getting involved in the community in any form or fashion. Right now it's difficult, right? But this will pass and we yeah. will get back to our new normal, whatever that may be. So there's digital aspects that can allow you like what we're doing. I mean, right. you're in Virginia, I'm in Colorado. We're having a great conversation. I mean, technology uh -huh. can bring people together if you use it correctly. So I think that you know, looking at it from a digital side and a physical side and, and finding a, a good marriage of the two mm -hmm. is huge for people to really understand. So if you don't yeah. understand that or have that, you're going to have all Jan's information. So <laughs> reach out, get to know this. I think it's fantastic. Um, but that's super, super good advice, Jan. Really, really great stuff. Uh, let me go on to the tricky part. Now, this is the challenge question. And it always leaves Titans thinking a little bit uh, deeper, which it's really the point. It's just to shed light on that we're all human and we all have struggle and challenge in our life. Now, whether it's 
physical, um, whether it ends up being business related or personally. Uh, Jan, if you could look back at your career, thus, your career and your life and, and see if there was a challenge that you dealt with that you overcame and became stronger because of it. Yeah. Uh, what's that look like for you? What can you share with everybody? Well, as I mentioned, I think having, um, having a, a mom like, you know, that is, is just sad and you don't understand it. You don't look, mm -hmm. I mean, I remember as a kindergartner, like thinking the weight of the world on my shoulders, I have to make mom happy. How can I make her happy? You know? Wow. And it's so sad. Um, but I do think that um, I never like am upset about it in particular, rather even as a middle schooler and high schooler and college, I, I thought, you know, I just have to do whatever I have to do so that I don't ever feel that way. Wow. So I think that that, that challenge of, of dealing with that your entire life hmm. until about a couple of years ago. Sure. Um, and, you know, it just makes you realize um, how, how precious life is and how awesome it is, hmm. you know, and, and just um, keeping your mind on what's good versus what you lack, perhaps maybe that's part of it. Sure. And, and, you know, thanks for sharing that. It's not easy to, to do and, and, and talk about those things, but I know that there's so many of us out there who are watching or listening, who look at the expectations of others. And, and we do, we do want approval in certain facets and we do want to please people. And, uh, but I, I think to look at it from the healthiest of standpoints, we have to make sure that we're okay inside ourselves yeah. uh, before we can take care of others. And it's very difficult to, to kind of have that balance in life, but what you're mentioning, at least to me, and hopefully people are taking this away too, it is a mindset. You have yeah. to have the, the proper mindset and work at it. It's not easy and it doesn't happen overnight. It takes work, um, just like anything in our lives, our relationships and our health and, and our spirituality and, and everything that we're feeding our minds. It takes work. It takes time. But um, I think that that's a great message for everybody to kind of go through. And, and that's why I asked this question. It's just for, for everybody to know that we all have things that we're going through and it's not to downplay pain or sorrow. But just understand that there's a lesson to be learned and there's something that we can grow from and share. And I think that's the most important thing um, at yeah. the end of the day. And, and again, it brings all of us together. So hopefully everybody appreciated that because I know that I do. So Jan, thanks for sharing. It's not easy. Oh, no problem. I, uh, I agree. I agree. I, um, when I shared my story, I, I, everything blew up. I mean, hmm. my Facebook, everything. And I think it was because um, you look at someone and you make assumptions. Yeah. Oh, they had, looks like she had an easy life or whatever, but mm -hmm. they, people don't understand, you know, what the layers are underneath. So that's why I, I freely share it because I want everybody to understand that it doesn't matter really where you came from, but where you are at this point moving forward. And I really believe that. Oh, I love that. That is so great. It's huge. <laughs> Great, great stuff and advice. And we're, we're just getting warmed up here. So I, I do want to go to a softer question. And this one actually is one of my favorites. And it's the travel back in time. Now, you had already kind of mentioned earlier, hey, I, I wish that I kind of looked at my team or started that or, or grew that a little yeah. bit faster or sooner. We're not looking at it from the standpoint of traveling back in time and necessarily changing anything you went through because what you went through, positive or negative, made you who you are. Right. So, But if you did have an opportunity to go back in time, and give your younger self a piece of advice at any time frame, any age range, what would you say to your younger self? Mm -hmm. um, I think that um, just the whole authenticity and sincerity, mm -hmm. because um, I, you know, I was brought up in the IBM Navy suit, mm -hmm. you know, and like my daughter's 28, my oldest. And, um, and it's so funny because she has little girls now. So I pull out pictures and I, when she was four and five and I, I was corporate and I wore my suit and many yeah. times I was Navy. I mean, mm -hmm. but I didn't work in IBM, but um, I think that that kind of made my generation feel like we had to be a certain way. And we, uh, you know, and so, and so, you know, when you're 5'11 and most girls are 5'4", you already are different, right? Sure. And so I just feel like um, just embracing how God made you hmm. and, and going with it. Like I'm, I have a quirky, weird person, like, like sense of humor and dry. And so, and I used to hide it. Now I'm hmm. like, I don't care. I'm just out <laughs> with it. So, so to say, Hey, your time will come and just be who you are and stop trying to be um, like the average girl because you're 5'11". So obviously you're not the average girl. <laughs> 
But, but Jan, that's beautiful. I mean, saying that now obviously is not impacting what had happened, but it's, it's impacting anybody who's watching or listening, myself included, is that's something that we can look at today. And as you said earlier, what we're doing today and, you know, kind of echoing to the future are those actions that we're, we're implementing. So not really kind of looking at it from the perspective of trying to please everybody or to be uh, nothing but your most authentic self is beautiful. I, I think that's so true. And, and to be honest, everybody wants to, to have the original. They don't want carbon right. copies. They don't want a copy of someone else. They want to work with an original and somebody they can connect with. And, and, and people understand when you're being real and when you're not. Most yeah. do. Yeah. So just... I think that's great. Just get rid of the, any facade and, and, you know, do the best you can be the best version of you. Don't try to be the, a copy of someone else. or what you think yeah. they might want to see or hear. Right. I think that's perfect. We would all be much happier and we'd all be much better off period. If we all kind of took that in um, it's easier said than done for, for, for some and professionals, but uh, I agree with it hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like um, people are so bi- like people keep, stuff in their brain like like they'll be on facebook all day instagram mm-hmm. whatever and twitter and they're not really living their lives and then when some when i say to a new client so what do you like to do hmm. they don't <laughs> right no they don't know, but it's easy when you're raising kids for 18 years and then you're like oh wait now it's my turn so i get it um but i think if we took time to really be alone and and turn off some noise it'd be a heck of a lot easier well said. Well said. And, and that, that self comparison, you know, your, your competition, as they say, is in the mirror. That's really yeah. what it is. And, uh, and I love that at the end of the day. So uh, let's keep going. I mean, this is just nugget after nugget of information for everybody to latch onto. This is fantastic. So I do want to go to actually one of the crowd pleasers in addition, which is the feeding of the mind. we got two questions left. We're almost done. So yeah. okay. this one is looking at it from uh, everybody wants to know how the Titans are growing intellectually and, and really how they're kind of feeding their minds and, and growing their business that way as well. So I always lead into it with books you're reading or read that really inspire you, that you enjoy, uh, podcasts you might be listening to, influencers or coaches, um, you know, that you kind of tune into as well, different events that you might yeah. attend. I mean, just how are you feeding your mind? Yeah. Well, um, I love the book, The 4-Hour Work Week, and I can't remember who the heck wrote it, but I love that, and I'm, okay. I'm reading that now. Totally love it. I also love Stacey Tushel. Okay. Um, she has Foot Traffic Formula. Is it Foot, foot, foot Traffic Podcast? Okay. Um, she used to be an online coach, and then because she had a brick and mortar as well, she, she switched over to that, and that's why it's called Foot Traffic. Um, but I really, really love her. Um, of course, Gary V crushing it. Yeah. Um, that's a really good book. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as events, um, I, interestingly enough, I was going to start going to the Tony Robbins because I, I had seen Tony Robbins. Um, let's see, I was 29. So, I mean, like, I don't know, 25 years ago when he was nobody. Wow. And, wow. um, and so I was like, I think I'm going to go to one of his like multi-day events. I was excited mm-hmm. about that. Um, but yeah, I, I don't, obviously not going to any events now, but Sure. I'd say as far as coaches, I, um, I like Marie Forleo. She's hilarious. Okay. Um, and then, um, my coach is Hank Avink, um, oh. who, um, who is just pretty amazing. So I love that. And, and, and again, just feeding your mind from so many different sources, when you're talking about books, podcasts, you know, really just going into the motivational, but then inspirational portions. I think it's really just feeding it from multiple sources, but picking and choosing what works for you. And again, being that best version of yourself. When it comes to speaking engagements, though, you are out there, Jan, you're doing your thing. So you have a few speaking engagements coming up digitally because of what we're going through. Would you mind sharing a little bit about that with the audience? So um, my friend, Makita Smith, she has a Facebook group called Savvy Chicks in Real Estate. And I am one of her speakers at her virtual um, second annual licensed and unbothered event, Hmm. um, June 5th to the 7th. And I'm speaking on the last day. Okay. And so that's one. Um, I had, um, I have an event every year that's called um, She's Unstoppable Live. And we just, um, we were going to have it April 14th here in Richmond. We had it last year in DC. We had Tracy Tudor there and um, Dottie Herman. This year we had um, so many excellent women. Um, Hmm but we decided to have it virtually. So we just finished that. 
Um, and that was pretty amazing. Well, about a month ago, amazing. Um, but then I'm, I'm really excited that I'm launching a new community for women real estate agents. My whole thing is harmonizing your career with the rest of your life. Hmm. And so unlike other real estate community memberships um, that speak specifically just to real estate, mm -hmm. this one, I have a finance coach who's going to help you get out of debt um, and help you really organize your business as an entrepreneur from a finance hmm. perspective. I have a style coach um, who out, who used to be a life coach and she really just hooked on to, which is pretty amazing her story, but anyway, style, a parenting coach, a health and nutrition coach. I have a content coach. I have, um, wow. Lloyd Velasquez. I don't know if you ever interviewed her, but she's amazing. I have not. I have not. Okay, she's awesome. Well, she's going to be, um, she has about a hundred thousand followers and on social media. And so she's Love our it. media guru. And so every month, the members will will have access to our portal, um, you know, inside the community. And then every coach has their um, monthly video with a company worksheet, checklist, whatever. And they have access to me because, of course, I'm doing real estate coaching. And um, it's just really cool. They have training discounts with all things real estate. We were talking earlier about awesome Tracy Hicks. Yes. Uh, hey, it's, um, it's just, yeah, hey, Tracy. So it's all... Um, I'm really excited. We're launching that mid June. So okay. she's unstoppable now is what that's going to be called. Okay. So I would <laughs> love it, Jan, if you wouldn't mind when that's launched and released, please send me the information. I'd love to share it with the Titan nation. Everybody Thank can jump you. on there. It would be an honor to do Thank so. Thank you. Greg, I definitely will. Thank you. Very cool. And, and as always, everybody, I'm gonna have links in the comments down below so you can feed your mind and really grow and understand as much as possible as Jan's thrown at you. This is just jam packed of incredible information, but Jan, I got to thank you. It's just been an absolute honor and a thrill. And this has just been a, a whirlwind of information. I do want to finish everything up with a final question. Mm -hmm. And this ends up being the quote or mm -hmm. mantra that sums you up as a, as a person, as a professional. What's that look like for Jan Copeland? I feel like I always have two, but um, okay. I can do all things through Christ. So of course that's scripture. Mm -hmm. And then the other one is um, be sincere or be silent. Hmm. Because I just feel like um, the world would be a heck of a lot better if everybody were sincere. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Wow. I mean, when you're talking about both of those are, are absolutely incredible and it speaks volumes about you, your character and integrity and what you do. So uh, Jan, again, thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, you are an official real estate Titan. So I need Yay, to thank you. It's, there, it's, there, it's official. Uh, but yeah, seriously, Jan, thank you so much. It was an honor. Thank you, Greg. Appreciate and it. Everybody, thank you as well for your time and attention. As always, your love and support. If you like what we're doing here for Real Estate Titans, please don't forget to like and subscribe. You know where it's at at this point. Uh, I do have to give our sponsor a quick shout out, Lionbolt Media. On the digital end for real estate, if you're looking to grow and scale your business, please visit lionboltmedia.com. Uh, we are live here with Real Estate Titans every Tuesday and Friday afternoon, a different Titan, a different location. Catch everybody in the next live episode of Real Estate Titans. Take care. Thanks, Jan. Thank you.